Hello and welcome back. Before I begin, I have several new subscribers to thank, so forgive my reading off the list, but thank you to my Dark Flight 333, Lion 117, Janelle 167, A Butterfly in Winter, Jevlog T, DRG DRF, Secretly Siblings, Ghost of Xmas Past, and Jeremy C860. Thank you all so much. I really appreciate you taking the time to subscribe. And now on with the haul. And first of all, my apologies. I realize this is rather late in coming. I usually try to do one right at the end of the month, but unforeseen circumstances and whatnot, but better late than never, right? As usual, this is going to be a haul from the Book Thing of Baltimore, a wonderful nonprofit that gives out free books on the weekends and also accepts donations of unwanted books. And this, I have to say, was a pretty great haul. I got a lot of high quality stuff and really not, you know, no dross at all. Um, first up, I was really excited to find this. This is the Illustrated Junior Library Edition of Kidnapped by Robert Louis Stevenson. And as I've said before, I've started collecting these Illustrated Junior Library Editions because I think they are just lovely. Um, this one's in, you know, a little bit tattered up, but that's all right. Uh, this particular edition has illustrations by Lynn Ward, who has become has come rather into fashion of late. Library of America put out a couple of um, volumes of his work. Um, Kidnapped was one of my favorite books when I was a kid. I loved um, Kidnapped and the sequel, David Balfour, which is also known as Catriona. And I love Treasure Island, also by Robert Louis Stevenson. So I was excited to find this really nice edition of the book because um, the one I have is some ratty old paperback I found in some relative basement. So this is definitely an upgrade. And then I got La Terre by Emile Zola. Zola's novel Thérèse Raquin is one of my all-time favorites. It's, um, you can almost read it as a precursor to James M. Cain's The Postman Always Rings Twice, which is one of my all-time favorite hard-boiled American noir novels. I have to say, the other couple of Zola's I've read, uh, La Samoire and La Cure, I have not been as taken with, but I don't know, his, his work somehow still really appeals to me, so I'm just going to keep trying him until I get back into my Zola groove. And then I got The Fiston by Robert Pinget. Pinget is a well-known, or fairly well-known, modernist, sort of avant-garde French writer. Um, I don't really know much about this book, but I figured I should at least give Pinget a try. And then this, oh, this is a hoot. I, I should be embarrassed even to hold this up, but... Um, this is by Alberto Moravia, and it's called Command and I Will Obey You. And frankly, I like Moravia's novels, but I think I like the covers of his novels even better. Uh, this one says, his wife's strange hold over him led to a shocking new life, which apparently involves doing housework. I don't know. That's pretty great. And then I got The Spice Box of Earth by Leonard Cohen. This is a collection of poetry. And I'm a pretty big fan of Leonard Cohen's music, um, but he does have a bit of a tendency to get silly at times, and I flipped through this and a lot of this looks a little bit silly, but I love Leonard Cohen, so I had to keep it. It's got that great little retro cover going on. And then this one's also a little bit embarrassing. This is The Teachings of Don Juan, A Yucky Way of Knowledge by Carlos Castaneda. And the, I, I have a good reason for getting this, though, because, or actually it's a really silly reason, but it makes sense to me. There's this really great Fleetwood Mac song called Hypnotized. And in one of the verses, they say, I've heard there's a place down in Mexico where a man can fly. And that, I believe, is in reference to uh, these Carlos Castaneda books. So I blame it on Fleetwood Mac. I blame everything else on them. Why not? And then I got The Ruined Map by Kobo Abe. I'm starting to feel a little bad because I'm starting to get rather a collection of Abe novels that I have not yet read. I've read only one of his books, The Ark Sakura. And I actually liked that one, but it wasn't great. It kind of started by the end. It was like, okay, you've got as far as you can with the giant toilet thing and we need to move on. But just something about his work really interests me, so I keep picking him up and may actually read some more of his work someday. Imagine that. And then, oh, this is really cool. This is Not I, But the Wind by Frida Lawrence. And Frida Lawrence was married to D.H. Lawrence, and this is a memoir of her life with him. 
and I'm a huge D.H. Lawrence fan. Um, ever, I've read his four major novels and some of his criticism, some of his poetry, um, and some of his um, shorter works as well. haven't gotten nearly close to reading his complete works, but I hope to someday. And he's one of those writers, everything I've read of his, I've at least liked, and a lot of it I've just out and out loved. My all-time favorite is Sons and Lovers, although that apparently is a lot of people's least favorite, so I don't know. But that one is really, really great, so I'm eager to um, read some nonfiction about him. And then I got Snapshots from Hell, a making of an MBA by Peter Robinson. I have to say that this whole MBA corporate um, you know, business culture, I find incredibly interesting. It's not really anything I ever could see myself being that much of a participant in, and my sort of short-lived try at that, it really didn't work and almost drove me crazy. But I find the whole, I just find it really fascinating from kind of an anthropological point of view. And then I got this novel called E by Matt Beaumont. This is basically an epistolary novel done via email um, in an office setting, and I'm not sure when this was written. Let's see. This was written in 2000 when email was still, I guess, kind of, I mean, it was around, but it wasn't the ubiquitous thing it is today, so I guess this was kind of a newfangled thing at the time. Then I got The Frog King, a novel by Adam Davies, and this is, I. For some reason, I find myself really drawn to kind of Gen X fiction written by men, which I know sounds really sexist, but I guess I just find it more exotic than Gen X fiction written by women. Um, so this is one of those. And then, oh, I was excited to get this. This is Mind the Gap by Christopher Bolden and Tim Levin. You may recall that in the haul I did from the Pratt Library book sale last year, I got another one of their novels called, oh, what the heck was it called? Something like The Map of Lost Moments or Lost Cities or something like that, sorry. Um, but Christopher Golden I'm really interested in because I read a novel of his called Wildwood Road that I thought was really cool and eager to try more of his work, although I am a little suspicious of novels that it takes two people to write, but we shall see. And then I got The Dead Secret by Wilkie Collins. You may recall, again in an earlier video, I picked up a novel called Armadale by Wilkie Collins. And I read that recently and just absolutely loved it. I thought it was just, it was really, really, really good. Just brilliantly done. Um, actually made me think of like a Victorian Faye Weldon. If, um, so if you like Faye, Wel Faye Weldon, you might want to give Wilkie Collins a try and vice versa. Just a brilliant, brilliant novel, great characters, and totally proto-feminist in a very subversive way. Just really good book. So anyway, so I love that so much that of course anything else I found by him I had to pick up and this is what I found. And then I got Revolting Youth by C.D. Payne. This is one of several sequels Payne wrote to his novel Youth in Revolt. Um, I'm starting to feel a little guilty because I this makes my third C.D. Payne novel that I have and I have not read anything of his. Um, but I do have Youth in Revolt and plan to read it sometime soon, I hope, because I just love the film. And I'm not sure whether my love for the film is because it was based on a really good book or because Miguel Arteta directed the film and he is just a genius. But we shall see. And these are kind of rare enough that I figured I should just grab it when it was there. And then I got Lost Tribe Jewish Fiction from the Edge. Gotta love the cover. And I know I'm going to pronounce this wrong, but I believe it is pronounced Click Song by John A. Williams. Uh, Williams wrote a novel called The Man Who Called I, Who, sorry, The Man Who Cried I Am, which I really liked. It wasn't quite what I expected, but I thought it was actually a lot more interesting than I expected. Um, and I've, as you know, I've been picking up a lot of things by him and haven't gotten around to reading those yet, but had to grab this. And then I got Angry Candy by Harlan Ellison. This is a collection of his short stories, and I've not read anything by Ellison, but he's supposed to be a pretty big deal in science fiction circles, and he's supposed to have really a dark 
edgy, angry sense of humor. As you can probably tell from the title, it's called Angry Candy. And then I got The Courage to Survive by Dennis J. Kucinich. Um, if you don't live in the U.S., you may not know who Dennis Kucinich is, or actually you may, I have no idea. But um, he was a congressman for a long time, and um, I don't think he's still in Congress. I think he lost his primary. Um, but he's very liberal, and he became kind of a, a um, perennial presidential candidate for a while. And I don't agree with all his positions, but um, some of his positions I do. And he just strikes me as a really idealistic and just cool person. And this is about his childhood, which was apparently quite hard scrabble. And then I'm so excited to get this. This is The Big Short by Michael Lewis. This is a nonfiction account of the economic meltdown in 2008. And um, you may recall, I got a book by Michael Lewis called Liar's Poker a while ago, and I read that some time ago, and it, that was just such a great book. I have to say, I think Liar's Poker may have changed my life. It just really changed the way I thought about things and thought about myself and of what I could be, and it was, I don't know, I would highly recommend that you read that book, especially if you're a little bit, I don't know, introverted and maybe a little shy, it just, I don't know. Anyway, Liar's Poker, great book, eager to read more about him, really excited to find this. And last but not least, I picked up Weave World by Clive Barker. Um, I had a, my very first Clive Barker experience was really pretty bad. It was a short story collection called The Inhuman Condition, and I just really didn't like any of those stories. But then I picked up The Great and Secret Show, which I rather liked. Um, it was interesting, it was almost, he was tackling some of the same themes that John Crowley tackles in his Egypt cycle, but in a completely different style, a lot more action-packed. Um, so I liked that. And then I read his books of blood, and I thought the first two books of blood had some really great stories in them. The third one, I was getting a little old. But um, anyway, I, I've liked enough of his work to um, make it worth my while to investigate him further, so I'm eager to read this one. And if you've made it this far, thanks for watching, and I hope you'll join me for my next video.